coming up, we celebrate one of the great voices of the rock era and one of the most successful songwriters of all time. He started with a group in the 70s and he topped the charts twice with them. And then he went solo in the 80s and he had one of the biggest albums of the decade. It went 10 times platinum in America alone. His story and his top five songs are up next on Professor of Rock, brought to you by Zenny Iwer. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Love to invite you to join our community of music celebration by subscribing below. You can hit the bell so you never miss out on our daily content. You can also become a patron to help us curate this great history, the history of the rock era. Now it's time for another edition of Vox, where we celebrate the greatest, the most unique vocalists of the rock and roll era. For me, this one today is a no-brainer. You know, there are a lot of singers who are so great at delivering a song that we sometimes take them for granted. I mean, even when they've sold tens of millions of records. I'm talking about artists like Neil Diamond, Diana Ross, and today's honoree, Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie has one of the most recognizable voices ever. For an 80s kid like me, he was such a huge part of my childhood and beyond that hearing one of his songs today is akin to having an amazing dinner with an old friend. I mean, his music really is comfort food for the soul. I remember when Casey Kasem announced that he was one of only two artists in the history of music who had written or co-written the number one hit for nine consecutive years. It was no surprise. I mean, there are very few in the history of music who can write and record hits, number one hits, in their sleep, it seems like. You know, Paul McCartney, Billy Joel, Lionel Richie, a few others. From the small historical town of Tuskegee, Alabama, one of the world's most accomplished vocalists and lyricists, Lionel Richie Jr. Now, Tuskegee has a population of only around 12,000 people, but despite its size, it was a very important site in African-American history. Tuskegee was the home of Booker T. Washington, a dominant leader in the African-American community between 1890 and 1915. Tuskegee was also the subject of the landmark 1960 civil rights case, Gamillion vs. Lightfoot, uh, reinforcing the protection of the 15th Amendment. Very important. Now, long before emerging into one of the all-time biggest selling artists, Lionel Richie actually contemplated being a priest in the Episcopal Church. But that career path seriously conflicted with his childhood dream of being a universally beloved music artist. Certainly couldn't do both. So Lionel Richie made a firm decision about his future when he was a 19-year-old student at the Tuskegee Institute. So Lionel at that time was a budding saxophonist, and he was rather shy. That's when he met Thomas McClary, a future bandmate with the Commodores. Thomas asked uh, Lionel if he'd like to join their band to play sax, not knowing whether Lionel was a good player or not. Again, Lionel was kind of bashful. Uh, Lionel emphatically accepted McClary's invitation. So Lionel and his new band of buddies entered a freshman talent contest organized by the Institute with Lionel playing saxophone. As soon as the band went on stage and Lionel heard the sound of screaming girls, he knew that his destiny was to be a musician and not a man of the cloth. The band actually won the talent contest and they began a journey that would lead to their transformation into the Commodores. Man, love the Commodores. Lionel Jr.'s decision to chase his desire to be a music star uh, didn't sit well with his father, Lionel Sr. Jr. told his father that the Commodores were gonna be the Black Beatles, but his dad didn't share uh, that lofty optimism of his son. Senior Lionel didn't change his opinion until sizable royalty checks payable to the order of a Lionel Richie started to arrive at their residence after the Commodores had their first hit record, Machine Gun, a single that peaked at number 22 on the R&B chart in 1974. Lionel was concerned though, Lionel Jr., because he hadn't received a royalty check, but his bandmates were getting theirs. So come to find out, Lionel's dad had been depositing the royalty checks into his own personal bank account because they were made out to Lionel Richie. Fortunately, the accounting got worked out there were no hard feelings, and it just turned out to be a funny story to tell. The Commodores, just to put them in perspective, they were formed in 1968, consisting of musicians from two splinter groups based in Alabama, the Mystics and the Jays. 
It was a six-man act featuring Lionel and McClary, along with William King, Andre Callahan, Michael Gilbert, and Mylon Williams. Now, the first lead singer for the Commodores was James Ingram. Not to be confused with the late Grammy Award-winning James Ingram, different James Ingram, but Ingram left the group to serve in the Vietnam War, and he was replaced by Walter Clyde Orange. Orange and Richie alternated as lead vocalists until Lionel grew to be really the principal songwriter. And his vocal style was more versatile and a better fit for most of the Commodore's material, especially their love songs. So Lionel assumed the role of primary vocalist. Now, initially signed to Motown Records to open for the Jackson 5, the Commodore's popularity gradually expanded, and by 1974, they had earned much larger billing on the marquee. Again, between the 74 and 81, the Commodores released nine studio albums, four of them achieving gold or platinum status. To put it in perspective, they had 16 top 20 R&B hits and 16 top 40 pop hits, including such endearing classics as Three Times a Lady, Still, Easy, Sell On, and Oh No, penned solely by Lionel Richie. After writing the number one pop and country ballad Lady for Kenny Rogers in 1980, and the mega smash, Endless Love, duet with Diana Ross in 81, Motown Records asked Lionel if he wanted to make a solo album. Very smart move, considering that Endless Love was one of Motown's biggest selling singles in the storied label's history. A song that we're definitely going to cover on our greatest duet series, Dose, very soon. Oh my love. Originally, a solo album by Lionel was only intended to be a side project, and he was going to remain with the Commodores. Uh, but that success of his self-titled debut album in 1982 was so enormous, Lionel's move to go full-scale solo and leave the Commodores was really inescapable. Lionel Richie became a household name. His silky smooth serenade uh, has wooed millions around the world with over four decades of iconic music. He has sold over 100 million, that's right, 100 million records. He's won four Grammy Awards, including Song of the Year in 85 for We Are the World, Album of the Year for Can't Slow Down in 84, and Producer of the Year, Non-Classical, also in 84. He also has been nominated for Song of the Year six times. Lionel won the Academy Award for Best Original Song for Say You, Say Me from the motion picture soundtrack of White Nights in 85. And uh, just many, many more honors have been bestowed upon him. Perhaps Lionel Richie's most satisfying achievement is co-writing We Are the World with Michael Jackson. The superstar collaboration generated more than $63 million for humanitarian aid in Africa and America. That's the equivalent of nearly $150 million in today's currency. And it's just a great example of an artist using his star power to do something meaningful for those in need. We Are the World was such a touchstone for our generation of 80s kids, and it's also the eighth best-selling physical single in history. When the world must come together as one. Having said that, here is my Lionel Richie fiver. This is really the most difficult fiver I've ever done because I'm including both his solo and Commodore's material. Ugh. But first, some honorable mentions, and I'll let Lionel just sing those for you. Got this feeling down deep in my soul. On any given day, any of those would be in my fiver. Again, very difficult. Number five from 1983, Running With The Night. From Lionel's essential second solo album release, Can't Slow Down. Running With The Night spotlights the rock and roll side of Lionel Richie's multifaceted vocal skill. The writing and recording of Running With The Night was a star-studded experience. The track, first of all, was co-produced by James Anthony Carmichael, a Grammy Award-winning arranger and musician whose credits went all the way back to work that he did with the legendary crooner Bing Crosby. That's a big career. Toto Steve Lukather performed the guitar solo and Richard Marks sang background vocals. Plus, Lionel co-authored Running With The Night with the renowned lyricist Cynthia Weil, who along with her husband Barry Mann had 
have really composed some of the most beloved songs in the history of popular music, including You've Lost That Love and Feeling. I've interviewed Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil, and uh, here's what she had to say about it. Lionel just gave me the melody and um, said, write me a music video. <laughs> really? Yeah. Now, Running With The Night rose to number six on the Billboard R&B and Adult Contemporary chart. It broke into the top 10 throughout Europe, and it peaked at number seven in Canada and on the Billboard Hot 100. Number four, Easy from 1977, performed by Lionel Richie and the Commodores. I mean, the beautiful tranquility of Lionel Richie's vocal and deeply resonating lyrics make this song a timeless standard. Lionel gave us an invigorating, come-to-terms ballad about facing the reality of a failed relationship. I'm easy like Sunday morning. Sometimes it's best to be honest with yourself, accept the circumstances, admit that you've done all you can, and just move ahead. Although the song deals with a dying relationship, Lionel confided that some of the lyrics for Easy were inspired by a stack of contracts that were presented to him and other members of the Commodores, stipulating a year's worth of commitments with no flexibility. The lines, why in the world would anybody put chains on me, and I'm not happy when I try to fake it, were spawned from his dismay of being confined to those rigid business obligations. Lionel seeing That's Why I'm Easy, I'm Easy Like Sunday Morning, it has such a calming effect. I mean, I remember growing up, my dad used to sing this song when it come on the radio, and he'd like try to convince me to sing it. He'd like put a fake microphone in my face. And uh, a lot of times when somebody would say to him, you know, how you doing? Or how are you today? He'd say, um, I'm easy like Sunday morning. Ah, great memories. Anyway, it's one of the most therapeutic vocals ever recorded, in my opinion. His voice just lifts us to a peaceful place where we find comfort and liberty. Easy is the song that Lionel considers his national anthem because it was the first song that he wrote that he felt had the potential to be a global hit. And wow, did it ever become a hit. Easy climbed to number one on the Billboard R&B chart, number four on the Billboard Hot 100, should have been a number one, and number nine in the UK. Another stellar part of Easy is the acclaimed guitar solo by Commodore's lead player and the man who originally recruited Lionel, Thomas McClary. What a solo. How many times have you sung along to it? I know I have. You can find a wonderful remake of Easy, actually, on Lionel Richie's 2012 studio album, Tuskegee, featuring a Lionel duet with Willie Nelson. The highlight of that interpretation is Willie singing the lyric, I want to be high, so high, as Lionel would say, that's a line that was uh, destined for Willie to sing. Number three, still. Lionel Richie's misty-eyed love letter, released in 1979, inspired by the true life breakup of his friend William Smitty Smith's marriage. Lionel wrote still after a long, heavy conversation with Smitty about his failing marriage. The conversation between Lionel and Smitty started in the evening, and it went well after sunrise the following morning. Very deep conversation, I guess. The two friends reached the conclusion that Smitty should end his marriage in order to save the deep friendship still existed with his wife. Dissolution of matrimony didn't have to mean the end of a relationship between two people that really cared deeply for each other. I find that the honesty and prayer for resolve in the lyrics is what makes still such a powerfully emotive Lionel Richie song. I mean, the lyrics, two people lost in the storm, where did we go, where did we go? Lost what we both had found, you know, we let each other down, but then most of all, I do love you, still. Still. Lionel Richie is just one of the most incredible lyricists of the rock era. Surprisingly, he didn't know he was capable of writing a song until he joined the Commodores. He was not educated in music theory, and he actually couldn't read or write music, but what Lionel possesses is a God-given ability to come up with a, with a magical line and melody that instantly resonates with people. That's only one part of it though. Another part is that he has to sing those lyrics and there's something about his voice. Very few have it. Sinatra is a, a great example. When you heard Frank sing a standard that had been sung many times by 
by incredible vocalists. Once Frank got a hold of it, you forgot every other version because Sinatra made it his own. That's what Lionel Richie does. You could have, you know, 100 singers sing Still or Stuck on You or Hello, and they just wouldn't compare. There's a timbre to Lionel's voice, a truth, a pang of heartache that is unlike any other voice out there. Cause I need you so. There's a certain sophistication to his writing as well that is kind of unorthodox and it breaks conventional song crafting rules, especially with the transitions in his arrangements. His unique writing style is very apparent in the framing of the song still. I mean, there's no profound hook line in the song. The song's indelible emotional strength lies in the poignancy of every word and every nuance of the melody. Not a catchy turn of phrase or a repetition of a chorus. I mean, Lionel can mix up different keys and still manage to weave the melody throughout his songs. It's incredible. It's a skill you can't teach. I mean, Lionel naturally possesses that innate uh, talent. When Lionel was signed to Motown Records, he learned that nearly all of the renowned songwriters at the legendary label couldn't read or write music either. Paul McCartney can't, uh, there's a lot. Uh, that bolstered his confidence tremendously that he could indeed be a songwriter. Lionel stated that he tries not to overthink anything when he's writing. He lets his feelings and creative juices just flow unabated. In recognition of the universal esteem by his peers, Lionel received the Songwriters Hall of Fame, their highest honor, the Johnny Mercer Award in 2016. Number two, from the 1979 Commodores album, Midnight Magic, Sell On. As Lionel wrote and sang, when you break away from a toxic relationship, good times never felt so good. Sail On rose to number four on the Billboard Hot 100, number eight in the UK, and was a top 10 single on the R&B and AC charts. You know, there's some really cool change-ups in Lionel's vocal performance on Sail On that make this song just a standout from other amazing Lionel Richie compositions. Sail On has the hurt and the frustration of a country and western song reminiscent of the golden era of country music that included fellow Alabamans uh, Hank Williams and Bryn Gosden. And like I mentioned a moment ago, Lionel's interpretation of this song is so achingly beautiful. It's so heart-wrenching at times that as a listener, you're kind of on the verge of tears at almost every turn. Say, would you please just go away? Lionel sings Sail On with a small town boy sincerity that harkens his formative days in Tuskegee. I love it when he delivers the line, it was plain to see that a small town boy like me just uh, wasn't your cup of tea, I was wishful thinking. Wasn't your cup of tea, I was wishful thinking. He has like this playfully uh, innocent southern drawl to give the track even more of a country flavor. Sail On includes the subtle accent of a steel guitar layered with the Commodore's R&B instrumentation that fortifies the tune's soulfulness. Lionel also channels his gospel days as a youth for his singing style with a sermon-like declaration in the second chorus, I've thrown away the blues, I'm tired of being used, I want everyone to know I'm looking for a good time. And then when he goes in that to that uh, boisterous and just raging sail on, good times never felt so good, vocal ending with the horns, those sprawling horns, his vocal teeters between defiance and full-on emotional breakdown. Like he's trying to convince us and himself that he'll be okay. And he sounds like he's not sure if he really will. It's an emotional vocal delivery that can't be taught. You either have it or you don't. And believe me, Lionel Richie has it, especially on this part. I listened to this song on repeat when I went through a painful divorce in my late 20s. Ah, man, Lionel and this song got me through that. Okay, before we move on to the number one pick, here's a professor of rock directive that you, you have to follow or you're gonna have to go to the back of the class. You can only listen to the full version of Sail On. The edited single version is anticlimactic compared to the crescendo of the full version. If you have an edited version of Sail On in your collection, put it in the trash and replace it with the full version. It's a must. 
We'll give you an option to do that at the very end here. Number one, the Fiesta Forever All Night Long. Lionel's signature composition from the award-winning Can't Slow Down LP, one of my favorite songs of all time. Now, Lionel, a self-described hopeless romantic, gave us one of the ultimate party tunes. Kind of just makes us want to hang out with our friends and jam in the streets, proving that his vocal versatility goes beyond his eminence as a balladeer for sure. The outset for All Night Long began with a vibe that Lionel felt while on vacation in the Caribbean. He had developed all the parts for the song, the beginning, you know, the verses, and the middle segment. But he struggled to create that grand finale that would bring the whole song together. And then one night, he had an epiphany. The phrase, all night long, came down from the heavens, as Lionel described it, and he was ready to go into the studio to record it. All night long. All Night Long is a multicultural smash with a little Caribbean, you know, a little Spanish and a little Swahili in the lyrics and in the instrumentation. I mean, Lionel definitely combines reggae, calypso, pop, rhythm and blues, and the jubilation of African dance. Searching for the right words that would describe an infectious party for the song's bridge, Lionel asked his friend in Jamaica to define the meaning of the legendary Bob Marley's utterance Bop Chua Wa Wa in the reggae classic jam. Now, his friend explained that Marley's utterance has no meaning. So Lionel then launched a probe to find African words that could evoke the party spirit that he was looking for, only to find out that there are well over a hundred different African dialects and really no universal expressions that every African would translate exactly the same. So Lionel went back to the drawing board and he decided to make up his own party language, inventing the words All Night Long was a number one smash in 10 different countries, including the US where it also climbed to the peak of the R&B and adult contemporary survey in the fall of 83. It was a triple crown winner. The single had incredible staying power as well, it held the uh, position on the Billboard Hot 100 for an astonishing 24 weeks, which was incredible back in the 80s. Let the music take Fittingly, Lionel performed all night long at the closing ceremony of the 84 Olympics. I still remember that. And I'm giving you the same Professor of Rock directive for all night long that I gave you with Cell On. You must only listen to the full six minute and 25 second album version of All Night Long. It was even a joke that uh, was shared around my elementary school as a second grader in the small town in Idaho that I grew up in. Uh, we shared a joke about this song, it went like this. How long did Lionel Richie go to the bathroom? All night long. Oh boy, yeah. Now the album that this classic came from, Can Slow Down, was a scorcher. Along with Thriller, Synchronicity, Born in the USA, you know, Purple Rain, uh, Like a Virgin, Pyromania 1984, and a few others, it was one of those records that every 80s kid had in that 83 to 85 time period. Certified Diamond, over 10 million sold just in the US, Lionel Richie has created dozens of songs that have been part of so many facets of our lives. Songs that provided the soundtrack for our most joyful moments and our saddest experiences. He has created music that brings us up and music that helps us cope and find the courage to move forward to fully realize our happiness. Uh, we celebrate the inspiration and the God-given gift that Lionel Richie has shared with music fans around the world through the eloquent prose of his pen and the passion of his glorious and majestic voice. Uh, love Lionel Richie. Thanks for watching. Leave us a comment about Lionel Richie, both his solo work and with the Commodores. What is your fiver? What are your memories? We want to hear them. Celebrate the wonderful music of Lionel Richie below by clicking on our Amazon links. If you like our content, we invite you to join our community by subscribing below. Hit the bell. We always have content every day. Also, you can become an honorary patron to help us keep the music alive. We interview many about the stories behind the songs. We want to be able to have that history for every generation to know how incredible 
the rock era was, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. See you soon.